Hello and welcome to what is normally the weekly Canadian Gender Wars. I'm going to talk about something that is not gender related, nor is it Canadian related. We're going to have a part two about what's going on in the UK. And there's been some interesting developments that I want to look at. After all of the clashes up north, all of the rioting up north, we've seen a lot of rhetoric calling this far-right thuggery, and there's a certain truth to the fact that there is thuggery in these riots, uh, the reasons I touched on in my previous video. But that is extended. It has not calmed. The government seems to be inflaming tensions, and they certainly have... Tensions certainly have risen. Birmingham yesterday saw scenes of... I, it's not writing in the same way, but we'll look at some videos here. So let's start by looking at some response, some response, responses yesterday from Keir Starmer himself. What do you say to these accusations about two-tier policing? There's no two-tier policing. Uh, there is policing without fear or favour, exactly as it should be, exactly what I would expect and require. Um, so that is a non-issue. The focus here is not on the apparent motivation of anybody involved in this. This is not protest. This is violence. It's violence on our streets being inflicted and targeted on communities. And we're not going to tolerate that in this country. OK, so there is no two-tier policing. And it doesn't matter the motivations for any of this, any of the tensions in the country right now. So doesn't matter. So those girls who died and the reason that this kicked off and all of the previous tensions, none of that matters. It's not important and there is no two-tier policing. Now let's see what the Home Secretary Yvette Cooper has put out. The government has put in place new emergency security arrangements to support mosques across the country the targeted attacks that we have seen on mosques in the last few days have been a total disgrace. It's part of criminal thuggery and violence that we have seen in some towns and cities that we simply cannot stand for. We cannot tolerate far-right extremism, racism or Islamophobia in our country. This is not the country that Britain is. And that's why, as part of the protective security scheme for mosques, we have rapidly introduced these new emergency arrangements to make sure that where mosques have concerns they can get in touch with the Home Office for additional support as well as of course working closely with the local police. Everyone has the right to feel safe in their place of worship, everyone has the right to feel safe on the streets. Okay so there have been attack on the Muslim community through this, there does seem to be an element of ethnic tension and religious tension, there's no doubt about that, I, th I think anyone denying that um, is not seeing the big picture. And so Yvette Cooper is now saying that they're doubling down on protecting those mosques, protecting the Muslim community uh, from far-right thuggery uh, by deploying this standing army that Keir, was, uh, Keir Starmer was talking about. Interestingly, there was a BBC, early in the day, a BBC interview with, uh, I believe it was a police detective, and let's see what happened there. Police were, how can I put it, economical in what they released because they knew that they were sitting on a powder keg, as we've now seen. Had they have been more open in how they managed that powder keg and actually said, this guy is for those who are concerned and are trying to say this is an Islamist attack, he is in fact from an ethnic minority, but brought up as a Christian, so please okay, will you back it, off. Um, yeah, it, it very much sounds like the responsibility is taken away uh, in terms of the actions for what people did from um, from the individuals themselves, I'm not taking, but, um, I'm, not taking, but, but I'm not taking their responsibility away because it's my colleagues and my family members who are in the front line dealing with this. They're taking the brickbacks. What I'm saying is, you cannot. You have to be very careful now with tempers the way they are, and people's sense of angst of what had gone on in the preceding couple of days where you'd had an army officer stabbed in the back, the misleading representation in the northwest okay, that, where this a, occurred. That's a different case there, Kevin, so uh, we'll leave it there. That's Kevin no, Hurley. No, they're not. You're missing the point. All of you are missing the point. People conflate this 
and they make and, two and, I think and two, and they make five. We're worsening that conflation by mentioning the two uh, cases together here. So we'll leave it there. Thank you. Kevin Hurley, who's the... So what has the BBC done here? This is a, a police officer. He understands that you can either escalate or de-escalate, and he's seeing escalation. He is trying to talk about the complexities of these issues. The only way to solve a problem, in my opinion, is to understand the different complexities. Now, understanding and talking about a problem is not the same as supporting what's going on. There's a difference between the two. But this BBC reporter is definitely uh, has a list of things that she's allowed and not allowed to talk about and has cut this man off for trying to talk about the nuances in this situation and what could be done to improve uh, the situation because the police are also uh, in the firing line here. They're on the front lines of what's going on and they're seeing what's going on. So rightly, there's issues with how some of the police are handling it, but don't forget, they're also getting their orders from above and apparently above does not want their orders criticised. Part, I think, of what he's saying is that if you take one side and it seems... The politicians um, and many of the broadcaster and journalist class here are taking a side and uh, decided what their narrative is that they're going to stick behind. But when you do that and, and you're creating this two side divide, one side is going to feel aggravated that they're not being heard because don't forget, there are rioters and, and that's bad. It's criminality. But there's also millions of people who have issues that are not rioting and peaceful. And this this is about them as well. Because a lot of people on the streets who are peacefully gathering, you know, are being called far right, this, that, whatever on the street. And you have two sides clashing and all kinds of things. So not everyone is a far right thug here. And by doing that, you're aggravating the people who have concerns about immigration at, who are, and, and probably going to create more people willing to engage in violence. And then on the other side, you have a group that's emboldened because they feel protected and they can do whatever they want. And this is kind of what I'm seeing rising up at the minute. You know, am I, am I right? Am I wrong? I don't know. We'll see. Before I play this, I'm just going to add a little bit of context. We've, we've been hearing a lot of rhetoric that the EDL are to blame for everything, that Tommy Robinson has been inciting this entire thing. Um, and these mass waves of far-right thugs and EDL supporters, a, a group that doesn't exist, by the way, this group does not exist, are coming for Muslim communities. So that has been amplified by the media and, and, and online. And so now let's listen to um, some of what kicked off Birmingham yesterday. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi Guys, as you know, today there's been a lot of stuff on social media regarding the EDL and the march and the protest. Some are saying it's lies, some are saying it's haq, some are saying it's batil. There's no idea. We've had it confirmed from the masjid. The ulama from the masjid have been spoke to the police. The police have confirmed there is a protest today. There is something going on in Birmingham today. So guys, please, we need you all, not only from Birmingham, from all over the place, all the reinforcements come and show that we will protect our communities. We are not of those who, who are going to be you know, defenseless. We will defend our people and our communities and our masjids. We will not stand shy. We will stand close to our people, alhamdulillah. We're not of those who cause trouble. Uksum billah, we're not those who cause trouble, but for the haq, we have to stand firm, inshallah. Everybody, everybody, please, in your numbers, as many people as you can gather, inshallah, to Allah, we need you here today. That's the address there, B9, 5 xu Boys and Green. We want this area fully chock black with Muslims to protect our sisters, our mothers, our honor, inshallah. We've had enough of this, there's no need for this. We are not those who are, who are unjust. Please, guys, see you there, 4 p.m. Okay, so now Muslims are starting to feel like they have to protect their communities uh, from all of these thugs from, from EDL. And uh, there's a lot of misinformation. I think there was also a, a far left activist from Hope Not Hate was saying that, uh, said that a Muslim woman was attacked with acid by EDL thugs or far right thugs. Um, so this is into the mix as well. So the, you know, the, 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 these guys feel like they have to uh, protect their communities. And so what do we see next? Oh dear, that does not look good. Allah 
Some more scenes from, I think, a similar area. Knock the, the hitting somebody, the smashing up people's cars. Oh, God. Yo, 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 this looks like random people that they're going after. I mean, it's unlikely that random people in cars are far-right thugs coming after them. But, you know, anything can happen when tempers flare. They're smashing the pub up. They shouldn't do that, man. That's wrong. So I don't agree with that. Attack. Uh, that's out of order, man. People are not racist in there. Maybe some of them are, maybe most of them ain't. But they're not out here demonstrating, they're not they're not using reasonable force. So we see here they're starting to go after random cars, people in pubs. These are not people that are protesting, these are just people out living their lives who are essentially not Muslim, not part of the gang. I want to look at another angle from this pub. There was some footage from uh, people inside the pub. This is uh, from inside the pub what happened. It looks very different. There's just one man, one native Brit, out there, and he just gets attacked by the mob. Just a being attacked. The rent of the pub beat up basically a red guy who's minding his own business. Now, that's not the only lone, I guess, native Brit that I saw being bitten up, beaten up by a large group of essentially Muslim men. Let's have a look. Oh, okay. There are tensions. We see that they have absolutely risen. Um, these gangs roaming around are not simply protecting their community. They're going after people. Now, I'm going to be honest. I don't think this is a problem of the Muslim community. I think there are all kinds of people in all kinds of communities, just like in the native British community or the people supporting the enough is enough. There are very, very angry people willing to be violent for their cause. Same thing in the Muslim community. There are people in there who are willing to be violent for their cause. Uh, both of these, I would put in the category of thugs who need to uh, have criminal consequences, both of them. But this is com comes back to the question of, is there two-tier policing because we've seen that yes there have been riots uh, from the so-called native community towards the muslim community we've seen that uh, we've also now seen very clearly in birmingham and you can go what there's so much footage of what happened in birmingham yesterday it's very clear that the there are many 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 gangs uh, well at least at least one but several gangs of violent uh, Muslim men who are willing to go after people, not just to protect. Now, I will say that I saw some footage um, of some people in the Muslim community that went to the pub afterwards and apologized. And so 
uh, and I've seen many, many videos of, of Muslims saying, don't, don't do this, don't wear masks, don't go fighting. You know, it, it's all trying to incite violence. And I've seen people in the native British community do that too. So there's a lot of people who understand that going, being violent in this way is, is just falling into the trap that our government clearly wants to uh, get you in, which is use these, uh, these, this situation to impose all kinds of draconian whatever's on, on the country. And, and, and people on all sides are saying, don't do that, don't get violent. But those tensions have been inflamed in all directions, and clearly that violence is continuing. So out of curiosity... Oh, before I do that, I just want to show even the even the media is under attack by these gangs in Birmingham. Community leaders have been speaking to the police as well because. Yeah, here we go. This guy Free is. Palestine. Uh, media, but I think. Apologies for the language you're hearing, but a sense of the right. anger. No, let's not show that. No, Casey. Let's not show that. Not part of the narrative. Apologize. We uh, need. To well, that's interesting. Why would Sky News do that? Because I saw something pretty egregious that happened by some of these violent thugs, I might add, uh, directed at Sky News. It Do not mind Here we are. A uh, young man who's part of the thuggery crowd. No, no, no. He's going he's gonna to slashing Sky it's News tires. going to do the same to us. Why are they running cover for these thugs? Why? Because there's a narrative. That's my opinion at this point. They have been told what the narrative is. Do not mind that is, that is crazy. So moving on, what did politicians say? So in reference to that Sky News clip, Jess Phillips says, these people came to this location because it's been, it has been spread that racists were coming to attack them. The misinformation was spread entirely to create this content. Right. What am I getting from that? It's not their fault. They're responding to misinformation. We have to have sympathy. They're not thugs. They're not criminals. This is just happening because of misinformation. Well, we've been hearing a lot about how online misinformation is causing the right, far right thuggery. And because of that, it should be shut down. So again, we're having a divide here, two tiers, one tier, the misinformation is means that they are victims of what's going on. The other tier misinformation means that they are uh, uh, perpetrators of what's going on. Now, we've just seen a whole bunch of footage of how these Muslim gangs were perpetrators without a shadow of a doubt, because as far as I can tell, there was no, there was no riot, there was no protest of white people or enough is enough protesters or the far right or any of that. All I've seen, and from what I can tell, what happened in Birmingham was entirely, the, the violence was entirely these gangs targeting just complete strangers these are non-protesters you heard in one of the videos the guy saying this is not right man these guys are these guys aren't protesting they're not the far right so that's what we saw and jess phillips is saying it, it's not their fault it's not their fault okay this is an article from the telegraph at midnight last night so after the events i can't read the article because it's behind a paywall but the headline here with the pictures of some of these gangs uh, some of the people in these gangs masked. You don't see the weapons here, but we know that some of them were armed. They've been emboldened to be armed because the previous day we saw many, many videos from different, or over the weekend, videos from police saying that they were safe if they got rid of their weapons. Nobody arrested them for having weapons. So they've been emboldened to carry blades. So the headline, masked Muslims stand guard at mosques. Hundred of, hundreds of men wearing masks and balaclavas gathered near McDonald's after speculation of far-right demonstration. There was no far-right demonstration. And we've seen them going after people in a pub. We've seen them roaming around the streets, not in front of mosques. Now, some, some people may have been in front of mosques just protecting those mosques, but that is not what we saw in those videos. So shame on you, Telegraph, for blatantly lying to anyone who's able to see these clips. Okay, well, let's give them some grace maybe this is just a mistake maybe for whatever reason they just did a poor job of capturing what happened over the evening because you know sometimes maybe this happens so what did what did i hear on the bbc this morning what did i hear this morning from the bbc this evening several vehicles in a pub have been attacked by a group of muslim youths following false reports that far-right protesters plan to march through the area and we heard a little earlier from our correspondent there phil mackie 
there were speculation that there was a planned far-right protest through that uh, area this evening. It turned out to be false information, but nonetheless, hundreds of people turned up, many of them wearing masks, some of them carrying weapons, as you saw. But it was a largely peaceful demonstration. I was there for several hours, but then uh, a group of masked youths began behaving in sort of low-level criminal behavior, um, reckless driving, antisocial behavior. What happened in the past hour or so is that they'd broken off, and uh, a group of them had attacked cars and a pub elsewhere in the city. Uh, I've just come off the phone to the police. They said they're investigating several cases of criminal damage, one of assault, one of carrying an offensive weapon. And the MP for Birmingham Yardley, in whose constituency, that is Jess Phillips, has just posted on X. She said the people in Yardley are scared tonight. We have directed police to all locations of violence we're hearing about. Any acts of violence will not be tolerated. The good news, sadly, is that the police say that that group of young Muslim masked youths has now dispersed, and it seems that things are beginning to calm down. One of the concerns, too, is this apparent so-called two-tier policing. We know yesterday Met Commissioner Mark Rowley was asked by a journalist about that very issue. He grabbed the microphone and threw it to the ground. Do you acknowledge and what do you understand this issue to be when people talk about the perception of two-tier policing, that this is not, the policing is not applied fairly across everybody who is on the streets? How do you tackle that? And do they have a point? So I don't accept the idea that there is a two-tier policing system uh, in this country. I think it's a completely baseless assertion and I'm not going to entertain it. The police in this country uh, exercise their powers without fear or favour. And I think this accusation does a huge disservice to the thousands of policemen and women who go out to do their jobs every day to uphold the rule of law and who go into work in order to treat everyone fairly. And, and you so say I all protests that are on the streets of this country are policed in the same way? So, yes, fundamentally, the police will take operational decisions about how to police protests effectively. What I do take issue with, though, is the idea that what we're seeing on our streets at the moment is a protest. It is not. It is outright sheer criminality and violence and that is why the individuals who are responsible for it need to face the full force of the law um, and face consequences for the actions that they are choosing to take. Oh really? No two-tier policing? Hmm. Well, where were the police vehicles in all those videos that I showed earlier? I didn't see any of the police. Why could that be? Oh, that's silly music. But look, there are police. They're just driving away. They're driving away. They're just leaving. Look at all the, this large group of people around the roundabout and police. They're just leaving. Now, listen to this man went up to a police officer and asked him what was going on during, uh, during the events of, of yesterday. And uh, listen to this response from, from the police officer. Can I ask a question? Whether you answer it or not is another yeah, question. <laughs> uh, do you not have like dispersal orders in place for situations like this? Especially when, like, uh, you're not one of those people trying to make money, are you? Yeah, no, yeah, I'm yeah. just there. Uh, people want to know what's going on, and you can get yeah. down on the ground and ask questions. It's good too. I was just wondering if there's dispersal orders in the area. No. So you wouldn't disperse people in a situation like this. You wouldn't like start giving dispersal orders, or kettle them all in and take all of their addresses and details because we've seen it in recent days where people have been kettled in well, they've just the attacked where well, they have they've just attacked the pub not the people when we got here they weren't close but there's to there's criminal damage to the pub i've just recorded the window being smashed so no arrests have been made no and nobody's been dispersed from the area that's all you need to know people no dispersal orders well there isn't a special order because not the person who would make that decision doesn't feel it's necessary, and in fairness, neither do I, because none of the people there are causing any problems for us to require them to disperse them. 
So why, why, why was there no dogs down here tonight? Why was there no riot gear? Well, there was a couple of you were riot gear, but why were there the numbers that we've seen? This is, one of, this is the second largest city in the UK. Why are you asking? Because, because the I'm people... I'm not going to discuss particular because, police tactics. Because I'm a, citizen, I'm a citizen journalist and people want to know. I'm, I'm live streaming the incident now because people want to know. I haven't come down here for any issues. I've stood like a way away because I don't want to incite nothing, obviously. We've come across a small situation which was probably no different to everything we've come to on a Saturday night. A small story. Because right. there were large numbers down here in the local community. Yeah. Okay. The scuffle probably looked something that it probably wasn't. Okay. We have deployed assessments of small scuffle. You will notice, yes, um, that there are now no officers in riot gear, as you put it. Yeah. Okay. And all the people that are now in here are not causing the problem. And that any of the people that were involved in that scuffle initially have now left already. So there's no. There's a lot. Of, there's a heavy presence still, though. The presence of what? There's a heavy presence of oh, people okay. still here. Don't try to trip me up on my words. There's a heavy presence yeah, of is. people. You could have meant this or you could have meant no, you know who I'm going on about without yeah, trying to get me to trip up to say something that's live, not PC. There's a lot of people live, who live around here who are here. I, I don't see any issue with that. Nobody here is causing problems. But so do, do, you know, do you know the only reason I come here yeah. was because there was a group of individuals, very large presence of people, yeah. that were making a lot of threats online. Yeah, so I've come down here to document the fact that that was happening. Okay. You're now saying because it's not happening now that you've got here, all of those things that the British public have seen online tonight, and there's been many streams mm -hmm. from these people, they're, they're, I can even tell you that they're looking now in Stretford area for a okay. blue Skoda. Right. Well, anyway, we... Ah, my intelligence is better than yours then. That's quite worrying if my intelligence is better than yours. Oh, I get that, but I'm just trying to let you know that... They... Anyway, we must go. Sound, mate. So there you can see people that you didn't want to have a chat with me. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to leave it at that. Make up your own minds what's going on. I feel, it does feel to me like there's a two-tier society, not even just a two-tier policing. The politicians are absolutely, appear to me, to be stoking the flames of a terrible situation. We had a police officer trying to explain that this is not how we de-escalate a situation. He was cut off by the BBC, seeming that the BBC supports an escalation in the violence. We have an MP, uh, Birmingham, saying that this is not their fault, you know, it's not the Muslims' fault. It is all the, the other side's fault. So we have this, this it's okay to take a side in that way, again, not de-escalating the situation. We had the Minister of Courts saying there is no two-tier policing when clearly there's a two-tier policing. Oh, one thing I'll add too here, just another little video. The I think the Met Chief was asked by a journalist if there's two-tier policing, and look at what he did. You're watching Sky News. I want to show you some new images that have just been shared with us. This is Sir Mark Rowley, Commissioner of the Metropolitan Police, leaving the Cabinet Office in Westminster earlier this morning, just a few moments ago. Let's show you these images as he leaves the building. Are we going to end two-tier policing, sir? And I just want to show you that again, that question from that reporter about two-tier policing. You'll see the Met Police Commissioner grabs the grey implement. That's the microphone. Here it is. And then walks off. Other members of the press following him as he walks across the road there to what looks to be the waiting car. They were new images being brought to us. We'll bring you more on that situation shortly, of course. The government calling that COBRA meeting to bring together people like Sir Mark, police chiefs like Sir Mark, to look to how to respond to the situation across the UK, both in England and Northern Ireland. Just seen those developments as he left that meeting. We'll bring you more. We'll have our correspondent, Mari Aurora, in Downing Street for us. We'll get reaction in due course. So we see with our own eyes that things are not equal. They're not equal. We can see with our own eyes and hear with our own ears politicians lying to us, journalists running cover for them, the division being stoked by all kinds of people, being forced to be on some kind of side, people who are trying to uh, create some kind of de-escalation, being shut out of the conversation, and some authoritarian tactics are being suggested as measures. And we all know that there's nothing more permanent than a temporary solution to an emergency. We're hearing rumors about Wednesday being a really big day, as in, as in there's all these so-called far-right protests, if you want to call them that. And then you have these 
leftists, probably far leftists, organizing their own counter protests. So there's going to be a lot of tensions there if that's the case. Then you might throw on top of that an escalating amount of armed, masked, ganged Muslim responses to what's going on. Everybody's feeling angrier. Everybody's feeling more inflamed by the situation. The number of places went from simply being up in the north to spreading to the south, both Weymouth and now Plymouth saw some really massive uh, uprising yesterday, including masked Muslim um, elements in in Plymouth as well. But it was mostly, I think, sort of a leftist versus uh, on the right protest, people screaming, no fascists here type of thing, and the other side screaming, no communists here. Left to be seen what's going on. I don't think anything's going to happen Tuesday. Well, I hope not, but Wednesday is going to be a concern, and stay safe.